So now we're going to talk about some of the properties of the LOGIP model, and we're going to start by talking about how we can use our estimated uh, parameters and choice probabilities to get us marginal effects and elasticities. And the reason we're going to care about this is because a lot of times when we estimate a discrete choice model, we're wanting to maybe think about some counterfactuals. Or, or just understand if we were to change the data in some way, how does that affect people's choices? Uh, whether that's explicitly a counterfactual simulation or just thinking about kind of uh, uh, some of the underlying marginal effects and elasticities, ultimately that's oftentimes what we care about um, is, is how people, um, if we were to make a change in the choice setting, how does that kind of shuffle people around and make them substitute between things? And so we can kind of represent those kind of substitutions and, and these, these kind of comparisons between choices by looking at uh, marginal effects and elasticities. If we remember back to last week with the linear probability model, our coefficients themselves gave us marginal effects. That is, if we change some of the data by a little bit, how does that change the probability of making choices? Now that we're using, uh, not the linear probability model, but actually estimating the logit model, our parameters are gonna have a different interpretation. They're gonna be these structural parameters that represent things like marginal utility. So they don't give us marginal effects directly, but we're gonna be able to use the choice probabilities and parameters that come out of our model to derive marginal effects. So let's say we wanted to know if we change our data for alternative I by a little bit, how does that affect the probability of choosing I? So if we're thinking about, let's go back to that car versus bus commute choice example. If we change the cost of driving by a little bit, how does that change the probability of driving? If we change the cost of driving, how does that change the probability of driving? Ultimately, what we're saying is this derivative right here. This is like the mathematical expression for that. If we make a marginal, a tiny change in the cost of driving, what effect does that have on the actual probability of driving? There's some math here. There's even more math in the book to derive these. Ultimately though, if we assume that representative utility is linear and the coefficient or the parameter on Z is beta Z, so if Z is cost of driving, then beta Z is whatever that parameter is in front of cost. Well, then the marginal effect of cost of driving on the probability of driving is just going to be that parameter times the probability, choice probability of driving times one minus the choice probability of driving. So beta is something our model estimates. The choice probability is something we can calculate once we have our parameters and we can put all of those pieces together to get this marginal effect. Um, so uh, the linear probability model can be nice because it just directly gives us those, those uh, marginal effects. But the logit model in some sense is actually nicer because it gives us the underlying structural parameters that we care about Plus, we can use those structural parameters to get at the marginal effect. So we're kind of, we can, we can get more out of our model. Uh, we can get the same thing out of our model as the linear probability model, plus we can get more. Okay, so that's the marginal effect. If we think about how does the probability of driving change if we change the cost of driving by a little bit. But we might also care about how does the probability of taking the bus change if we change the cost of driving a little bit. Um, you know, maybe we actually have more than just those two alternatives. We could also bike, we could walk, we could take an Uber, we could carpool, list goes on and on. And so we want to know how would each one of those alternatives, how would their probabilities change if it becomes a little more expensive to drive? We'd think probably if it becomes more expensive to drive, the probability of driving is going to go down and, and maybe the probability of everything else is going to go up by a little bit but we want to know actually what number do we put on that. So now let's calculate the probability, how the change in the probability of, let's say taking the bus, if we have a marginal change in the cost of driving. So that's this derivative expression here. I now is bus and J is driving. 
If we assume representative utility is linear again, and the cost of driving has this beta Z coefficient, then the marginal effect, this kind of cross marginal effect, where I'm saying cross because we're going across alternatives, we're saying we change data about one alternative and what's the marginal effect on another alternative, that marginal effect is this simple expression here. It's the negative of the cost parameter times the choice probability uh, of the outcome you care about times the choice probability of the outcome that, that you're changing the data on. So both the choice probability of I and the choice probability of J. So once again, just like with the last one, we're not actually getting marginal effects out of our model directly, but our model is telling us beta Z. Our model also gives us a, a way to calculate these choice probabilities. And so we can calculate or estimate all of those pieces and then put them together and get marginal effects uh, just directly here. Uh, or not directly, but through a simple calculation, we can get marginal effects out of our model. Um, if we are using a binary logit model and we just have two alternatives, then these marginal effects, this one and the one on the last slide, are just going to be negatives of each other. Uh, if we have more than two alternatives, though, then they, they can't just be negatives of each other because we have a, more than two things kind of shifting around. And so uh, uh, they're, they're not just going to directly offset one another. So marginal effects can be useful. It's what comes out of the linear probability model. We can calculate them easily uh, from the logit model. But a lot of times we actually want to represent these, these kind of substitution patterns or how people change, change around their choices if the data changes. We want to represent that not through marginal effects, but through elasticities. And for those, just for a refresher, uh, an elasticity is the same concept as a marginal effect. It's just in percent changes rather than level changes. So we're saying if we change, for example, the cost of driving by 1%, what percent effect does that have on the choice probability of driving and on any of the other alternatives, bus, walk, bike, et cetera. And so we can also get a, a nice, simple uh, expression for these elasticities very similar to what we just did for marginal effects. Um, I'm not going to talk through all the math again here, uh, but at the end of the day, if we assume that representative utility is linear, then the elasticity of alternative I with respect to some attribute of alternative I. So let's say the elasticity of driving with respect to the cost of driving that is going to equal the parameter on cost times the actual cost. So now we have actual data showing up directly in our formula here, times one minus the choice probability of driving. So once again, just like with marginal effects, our model doesn't give us elasticities, but it gives us the beta. Z is just data that we knew from the beginning. We also know how to calculate choice probabilities. So we can put all these pieces together and calculate the elasticity of driving with respect to the cost of driving, for example, or any other elasticity that we wanted, depending on our specific context. We can also estimate the cross elasticities, where I'm saying if we change the cost of driving, how does that change the choice probabilities of other alternatives, the bus, walking, et cetera? So, just for the to talk through this, let's assume I is the bus and J is driving again. Then the elasticity of choosing the bus with respect to the cost of driving is going to equal the negative of the cost parameter times the actual cost data times the choice probability of j that's driving so cost parameter times cost of driving times choice probability of driving one thing to note here we wanted to calculate here the elasticity of taking the bus with respect to a change in the cost of driving but the bus doesn't actually show up anywhere here on the left side it's all j's it's all j's no matter which i we put on the left hand side it's all j's on the right hand side and so that might start pointing us towards 
one of the uh, uh, downsides of the logit model that we're going to talk about more in the next video talking about these substitution patterns that might be sometimes overly restrictive in the logit model.